Today's the day where we're finally going to understand NAS and RAID and all that exciting stuff. Serious data storage. Hi everyone and welcome to Pal to Tech. Today is the very first video in a multi-part series on the subject of data storage and organization. And today we will be talking about NAS devices themselves. First, a disclaimer. Synology sent me this expansion bay unit as well as these internal hard drives to test and review. I do already own several Synology NAS storage units. So while they did provide me with one expansion bay unit for this video, all of the other NAS units that you see in this video series, I purchased myself. I am not being paid by Synology to create any of these videos. I'd say it's a good bet that most of you consistently deal with managing data, photos, videos, and that sort of thing. Because at the end of the day, every photo that you take, every video that you shoot, every scene you've ever captured, they all end up as data. JPEG files, RAW files, Lightroom, XML sidecar files, all of this data needs to be stored somewhere. The single worst place that you can store data is right on your computer itself. Storing your data on your computer's internal hard drive presents several problems. First, you have no room to expand. Once you run out of storage space, you're screwed. Most computer manufacturers make it difficult, if not impossible, to change out or increase the size of your internal hard drive. Even if you could, the hassle of having to install a whole new operating system and configure everything back on the computer would be a nightmare. But not only that, computers, especially laptops, can be dropped, right? broken, stolen, and so forth. Imagine that every single photo or video that you've ever taken in your entire lifetime was stored on this X-T4 camera. That would be insane, right? So what is the best way to store and manage your photos and your videos? Well, to answer that question, let's put together a very necessary wish list. Item number one on our big wish list for data storage is that data storage must be expandable. The actual hard drives, right, that you use to store your data could be expanded in a simple matter of five minutes if you, say, needed to double their size. Currently, many people, myself included, will turn to external USB hard drives like these, these right here, all of these external hard drives, right? or external solid state drives, SSDs. Now, while they're better than storing everything on your computer, they eventually run out of space, okay? And then you have to get another one. And then you have to get another one. And then you have to get another one. And then you have to get another one, right? <laughs> Pretty soon you run out of ports on your computer to connect them all to. So you just throw them in a box like that. Not a great way to store your data. Shh, can you hear that? That noise. It's coming from this box. These drives are trying to tell us something. It's not if your hard drives will fail, but when. All hard drives, whether it's these old spinning platter versions like these, right? Or these modern SSDs, all of them will fail. It's just a matter of when that's gonna happen. So if you have all your data on one external hard drive and then that hard drive fails, which one day it will, you will lose forever all of your photos and your videos. And then you'll spend the rest of your life trying to edit them in your mind, imagining what they look like because they will no longer exist. So item number two, on our big wish list for data storage is redundancy. In other words, if one of your drives fail, that you have built-in systems in place that will quickly allow you to recover all of your data. Okay, item number three on the wish list is that of organization and ease of access. Now, imagine instead of having your photos and your videos spread out across all sorts of different drives that are connected externally to your computer, that all you saw instead was one drive only. You simply put everything inside that one drive and you organize it however you want. I do mine by folder for each year. 
here. Let's take this a step further. What if instead of attaching one big drive to your computer, right? You instead add that to your network. You plug it into one of the ethernet jacks on your router. Now it will be accessible to everyone on a single network and it will show up as a single drive. And you could also enable it to be remotely accessed from anywhere in the world. I mean, imagine being able to access and upload your photos while traveling, say overseas from your hotel or anywhere that you have an internet connection. And finally, for item number four on our wish list for data storage is speed, speed. We wanna be able to edit these videos in real time, quickly pull up thousands of photo previews and do everything that we can do on a locally connected hard drive to our computer. Well, it turns out there is a solution to this that gives us all of these items on our wish list. It's called Network Attached Storage and I have one of them right here to show you. This is the Synology DS1621 Plus. Now, this specific model has six drive bays located right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, right? However, NAS systems come in all kinds of configurations and models. I think that for most of you out there, a four or six bay NAS would be good enough. Now, inside each bay, you place a single hard drive. Now, these are slightly different than the kind of hard drives you would put, you know, inside your computer. These are NAS drives. They're a little bit different. They don't get as hot and they don't vibrate as much. They're meant to last longer and to be put inside these NAS systems. And they look like this. This is a 10 terabyte version. And inside each bay, you place one of the hard drives, right? You take the hard drive, you put it in the bay, you take the bay, you put it right inside the NAS unit, just like this. Very, very simple. Now these hard drives come in a variety of sizes. Obviously, if I place one 10 terabyte drive in each of these six bays, I would have 60 terabytes of storage, right? Well, yes and no. You could set up this NAS to be that way, but if you do, then you will not achieve rule number two on our list redundancy. And that's because if one of these drives inside this unit fails, you would lose all of the data on that drive. And honestly, you'd just be back to having the same problems as if you just hooked up a bunch of external drives like you do probably do now, right? So no, we don't want to do that. Instead, you want to set these drives up with this unit to have what's called a RAID configuration. RAID stands for Redundant Array of Independent Disks. And it's all of the confusion around the concept of RAID that I think is the number one reason why more people don't go out and get a NAS in the first place. And because RAID is actually confusing, at least it was to me, I will be devoting an entire episode of this video series to explain and make RAID as easy and as simple as possible for you to understand, as well as give you my recommendations. That will be the very next video I'm gonna be making in this series, and I expect to have it for you very soon. Okay, so back to the NAS unit. In in the meantime, you've got the six bays or four or whatever it is on the front, okay? Along with a power switch and some lights and that kind of thing. Then on the back is where you plug it into your wall power outlet, as well as where you would connect it to your network using a standard ethernet cable. There's also USB ports. And then there are these two other ports right here. You see those right here? Those are for expansion units just like this. So if you run out of space <laughs> on the main unit, you just get one of these, boom, plug it in, and now you have some serious data storage. <laughs> By the way, you can also connect the NAS straight to your computer itself. If it's just yourself and you don't want to share it on a network, it would be helpful for you to be thinking of this NAS system as a full-blown computer and not just a hard drive. It has its own operating system, which is actually very easy to use and allows you to manage all of your drives and your data right on the unit. You simply log into the unit itself and you'll see like a computer desktop, like what you'd see on a Mac or on a PC. It even has a control panel, which has all of your apps and of course your files. And there they are, see that? What's really nice about the Synology NAS system is that their software constantly monitors itself. It's showing that my overall volume is healthy. You see that? Love that green check mark. And if I go into my storage manager, you can see that I've put five drives into the bay. You see that right there? And if I wanted to add another one, 
plop it right in there and I've now expanded out my storage. Now, anyone that works in data storage will tell you that you should also have a copy of your data located off site. In case, I don't know, the whole studio burns down, I can still get copies of my photos and my videos. Just can't make any new ones, but I can get the copies of the ones that I have. You can use a service like Backblaze, right? They have a professional plan and you just plug it right into here and it cloud syncs everything perfectly. It's constantly watching your files and synchronizing them to the cloud to the Backblaze service, right? So if I lose for whatever reason, if this whole place burns down, I can still get a copy of everything from Backblaze. That's the service I use. I think they're wonderful, but there are other services that you can hook into this as well. You can install all kinds of apps on this thing, just like you would with any computer. Now, as I mentioned, you have an area in here where you can add, edit, and delete files and folders, right? Just like Windows Explorer or the Mac Finder. But here's the thing, outside of getting this thing initially set up, you never need to come into this software really and use it. You can browse right to your drive from any computer, Mac or PC that's connected into your network. Okay, so on the left, I have the operating system on the NAS, right? That's the software that's actually inside the NAS unit. On the right, I have the regular Mac Finder. And if you see here, if I go into File Station on the Synology unit, I look at that. If I go into here, it's exactly the same thing. You see that? So for example, I could go into a folder, right click it, right click, create new folder. Now I've just created that on my Mac. And if I go to 1980 on the Synology, there it is. I strongly recommend that you see my very next video in this series before running out to get one of these NAS systems. There's a lot to cover still, particularly about your RAID options. You'll be in a much better position to make the best purchase decision that you can. As I mentioned in part two of this series, I will take a specific deep dive right into RAID as well as what what drives you should get based on your data needs. Remember, when it comes to data and file management, this series that I'm doing and what I'm gonna be telling you is a marathon, it is not a sprint. You can expect the very next video to come out in the next several weeks. In the meantime, I hope you found this video helpful as a brief introduction to the NAS system and to get you excited about exploring the subject together. And if you didn't find it helpful, I hope you found it entertaining. It is not easy to make data stuff sound interesting, <laughs> right? Anyhow, if that's that's the case, give it the like and subscribe. I will see you in another video again very soon. Take care. So item number two on our big wish list. So <laughs> this studio is haunted.